delicious tea. They call me the Hatter because you give me the tea and we cool. They don't call me the Hatter. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Anyway, so, as I mentioned in our first episode, we are totally ripping off Counter Monkey. And because I am shameless, um, I am not, and, and, and Spoonie had a tutorial on dice, I'm not going to give a tutorial on dice. Except my tutorial is going to be a bit differently. Because um, I, for some time now, have been getting as many books as I possibly can and running it whenever I can and introducing it to as many people as I possibly can. The new Fantasy Flight uh, Star Wars system. So now I'm going to give a little tutorial about their dice system. Because it is a new dice system and inventive and probably my favorite dice system ever. But they, you know, like you got, you know, most people... The big problem with playing this game is they look at the dice and they're like, oh my god, what's going on here? What are all these symbols? What's going on here? So I'm going to try and alleviate that. Now, the dice are simple. You have the proficiency dice, the ability dice, and a boost die. Then you also have your negative dice, which are... I actually forget what specifically this one is called. Probably should have more research on that, but it's too late now. Uh, difficulty dice. And setback dice. When you break this system down, it's just a simple, you know, this cancels out this, that cancels out this, etc, etc. There are two exceptions. Another dice that I forgot to mention here, that I'm going to mention now, is the force die. Which is just consists of these small little pips. The faces on these dies, you have the triumph or crit as you would conventionally know it you then have uh successes and then you have advantage and those are counteracted by the despair the threat and the failure every failure gets rid of one success. Makes sense. Every threat gets rid of one advantage. Now, the despair and the triumphs stay, no matter what. Those are always there, and those are always something either really good or really bad, depending on what you do. Look at, look at your abilities, and you look at your skills. And every skill corresponds to an ability, just like Shadowrun, or VTM, or D&D. &D. And basically, you take the total number and that is the total number of dice that you roll between your skill and your ability. Look at one, which one's larger. So we'll say, for example, here, a character off the top of my head. Say he's got a three agility and a two in range light, and he wants to shoot a range light gun. So we, we look at it. Okay, what's the higher number? Three. That means we are rolling three dice. So we take our ability dice, three of them. Simple. Then, we look at the secondary number, the ranged light. Well, he's got a two in ranged light, meaning two of those green dice that we picked up, we put them back down, we pick up two yellow dice, because he's got two proficiency, you know, with firearms. Now, this also holds true here if we were to go the other way and say he had a two agility and a three in firearms. I hope I'm being clear. All right, I'm getting a nod back there. Then we look at our difficulty. Now, your average standard difficulty is going to be two purple die. That's just your standard normal difficulty on most situations. All right? So in this situation, we'll say he is shooting a gun, so we'll say he is in the middle of a docking bay firing at stormtroopers, something we can all see ourselves in. Now we're going to show examples of how you know, you would simply roll the dice, which I've rolled the dice here. As you can see here, we got three successes and two threat. So the three successes means that I hit the stormtroopers. You know, I go badow badow, they got hit. Now, what the two threat means is, well, something necessarily bad could potentially happen to me. Like now, so as a DM, you hit the troopers, 
And we'll say since it's a ranged light, you're probably just using a standard blaster pistol, which is six damage. You then take the six damage, add the three damage from here, and that's your total number of damage that, that you have done. Now, had I gotten a failure, that would be one less success, so it would only be, you know, two, two extra damage, or what have you. So, we're currently looking at nine damage going to the stormtroopers. Well, they then subtract their soak from that, and then take the damage. Now, two threat. That is about a standard amount of threat that you can get on a roll, as I got no advantage. So, I could also say that, yes, so we'll, we'll say you're the guy shooting here now. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to spend that two threat, and I'm going to rule that, yes, you hit them and you hit them quite well, so I'm going to say you got a little overzealous because of the distance, that you kind of had to get up a little bit and shoot, and therefore you left yourself a little bit exposed, granting them a boost die. They are a minion group, and I won't get into too much details with minion groups right here, but suffice to say, their skill depends on how many minions are in the group. So, their dice are only going to be these two dice, but it, which makes sense because they're minions. They're not as good as anybody. But because I ruled that they get a boost die, we're now going to add this to their attack, as well as our standard two difficulty dice. Alright. Now, the stormtroopers are also going to aim. So we're going to add a second one. So we roll our dice here. Alright, now, as you can see, their roll is quite different. They got two successes and two failures, which means they don't hit you because there's no successes. However, they did get a good bit of advantage. So, how do the stormtroopers wish to spend this advantage. I look at this as a DM, and I say the stormtroopers get up and they start firing from their cover. And while they don't manage to hit you, they just barely miss you, hitting some piece of machinery behind you that causes it to explode or rupture or whatever, and now it's blowing steam down upon you. You know, you can see that in a hangar bay. You know, there's machinery, there's things everywhere. What do they do? Advantage, you know, lets us explore these options. You know? So now, you get a setback die. So, once again, we go back to you. You know, your standard dice pool. Plus now our new setback. And now, you're slightly peeved, so you want to aim. So, we get this going on here. Alrighty then. Now, as you can see here, you did much, much better on this attack. So we got our two successes and two failures. So those immediately cancel out, which leaves us with two successes and three advantage. We're sitting pretty here, because if you've been following along, that's now eight damage we just did to those stormtroopers that they're going to have to soak. What we could say is, because we aimed so well, not only, we now hit the crates in front of the stormtroopers, causing the crate to explode, sending their, you know, contents everywhere, giving the stormtroopers now have a setback die. So you can see now how this advantage threat system can start to add up and affect combat. Now, another dice that we haven't used yet, a red dice here, still can't remember the name of it, We'll say the stormtrooper now is going to throw a thermal detonator at you. Now, as if I was reading the rules correctly, that means the difficulty is now upgraded to one of these. So we go back to them, their meager dice pool, and their difficulty now, plus the new one that we just gave them. That's, that's a persistent condition on them. Now, no me gusta. No me gusta. No me gusta indeed. Now, for this roll, we're going to cheat it here. For example, that they, that they rolled both a triumph, which also counts as a success, and a despair, which also counts as a failure. 
So now sitting on something like this, you know, this is not good. So I would look at this here. Now the Triumph, most often, usually from what I've seen, most people just immediately spend this on a crit if they manage to hit them. Now, in this situation, as they have both a Triumph and a Despair, they didn't hit. They can spend that to disarm you. They, they can spend it for most anything, as long as it's relevant to what they're doing, as long as it's relevant to what, you know, as in this case, them shooting. So, they fire, you know, in this case, they're throwing a grenade. Well, they throw the grenade good, and it explodes. You know, does it hurt you? No, because they missed and they didn't get enough advantage to activate the special ability of the grenade. However, they also got a despair. So, I look at this and I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, your, 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 your grenade knocks out some vitals in the hangar bay. It, 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 it seriously messes up your opponent. He, he, he now has a permanent setback to everything involved in this hangar bay, but you got to despair. So I'm going to rule that your grenade blast was so good, it also hurt some of the electronics in the bay itself. So now the bay is slowly depressurizing, adding an additional setback to everything you do. So as you can see, setbacks tend to start building up. Now, this is all well and good, but this is merely for combat. And you're probably wondering, well, how can I use these dice in social situations? Well, much the same way as, the, as, as an encounter in this system is an encounter. Whether it be a combat encounter, or whether it be a social encounter, or a mental encounter where you got to solve some puzzle. You know, you once again, you take your die, look whichever is bigger, we'll say, you know, intelligence of three and a persuasion of two, you know, once again, we're looking at same dice roll. Now, say you're trying to charm some senator into getting some fun to the Rebel Alliance. Well, you know, it's kind of a standard thing to do, but at the same time, though, it's going to be a little bit harder, so we got our three purple dice. But we can change this up a bit, take a purple dice away, add a red dice because maybe this senator has been known to have imperial contacts and you're not sure, you know, what he's going to say after you add your proposal. But at the same time, what if you're an alien and what if he's a racist? Well, then we got a setback die. Because now, now we have our racist human senator here, you know, looking pretty daunting. You know, sure, these are, you got two powerhouses here, but which number is bigger? So, we make our simple roll. We look at our results here. Hmm. Well, now we have our dice here. And our result, three success, or sorry, ooh, sorry, those two cancel out, and then we have two successes, ooh, and four threat. We have achieved our main goal here. We have convinced this man to give us funds for the Alliance. However, due to his status as a senator and his racism, he's going to give us money, but he's not going to, we now have not gotten as much money as we wanted. You know, a simple thing. A simple one and an example of how, you know, these dice work in social situations. Now, we're moving on to the last die, the force die. Now, this one is normally used uh, on most games. This is used, rolled right away at the beginning of the encounter to determine uh, the destiny point pool. What is a destiny point? Um, a destiny point is, we're going to call it a deus ex machina. Basically, it's one of these tokens right here. So you notice there's bad and good destiny, just as there is light and dark pips on this thing. Every player rolls one of these, and the corresponding 
pips correspond to the destiny points. What happens when you use a destiny point? You flip it over. So you spend a light destiny point, now a dark destiny point. Who uses these? Light destiny points used by the players, dark used by your GM. But another thing that this dice is used for is if you have any force powers, this is what you roll. Usually your force rating. Now, in looking at this dice here, you may note that a lot more of these faces are dark than light. But you'll also note that a lot more of the light faces have two pips on them. So, you know, while there's more dark faces, you know, there's still just as many light pips on there for good things. Because as we all know, the dark side is quicker, easier, more seductive, but not more powerful. There is just some of the simple basics of the dice system that the Fantasy Flight games use. It's very easy once you get to know it, very fun, and I've had amazing fun with it. Um, but yeah, so that's my dice tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope we all learned something here today. At the very least, if it's just, you know, the fact that I tend to be a whole lot better at describing what's going on in combat encounters and social encounters. No, I understood. And, yeah. and that's saying something, because uh, I always found this extremely daunting whenever I looked at it. Yeah. Not like learning another language at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to talk about that trip to D.C. Yeah, we're going to talk about that trip to D.C. We are definitely going to talk about it.